Uh, getting a laptop right now is one of the best ways to learn computer vision for a decent price because as you probably know, getting a dedicated graphic card is very expensive for a lot of reasons. One of them is the global shortage of chips which made their price very high, then they're used for mining cryptos which made their demand much higher than their production and a lot of other different reasons with only one consequence that the price is very high and it's not convenient to buy them. But today we will see how you can choose the best laptop to work with computer vision so you will learn about what parameters you need to take into consideration, what graphic card, what processor, uh, about the memory. We will see some examples of laptops and we will see what is the best, most important single component that you need to work with computer vision Hi there, my name is Sergio, I'm a computer vision developer and consultant and I help companies, freelancers and students to easily and efficiently build computer vision projects. Let's now see how you can choose the right laptop for computer vision. So let's start now with this beautiful graphic that I have right here and where I'm going to write the specs, the minimum specs that your computer needs to have. There are a lot of factors that we can take into consideration, but we will focus on the three most important things that you need to focus on. The first one is the graphic card or GPU. So let's write right here GPU. And when it, it comes to graphic cards, the choice is very simple because there is only one brand that we can use for this, which is NVIDIA. NVIDIA. So normally the most popular graphic cards brands are NVIDIA and AMD, but unfortunately, at least for the moment, and I don't know how long this will stay this way, NVIDIA has some kind of monopoly on deep learning because most of the libraries are just compatible with NVIDIA. So the choice for this one is very simple. Then there is a very important parameter that we need to take into consideration regarding the graphic card and is the memory. There is a minimum memory that we need to have and guess what? It's six gigabyte of memory. So GPU NVIDIA with six gigabyte of memory or of course more. If you have eight, 11, 12, 24, it's definitely better, but you can't have less than six gigabyte. And there is nothing as such low memory, slow training, slow computer, but it's low memory, you can't work because the libraries like TensorFlow or PyTorch, which are used for deep learning, will just give you out of memory, so oh, oh, out of memory, and you, you will have nothing to do with that. So if you get out of memory, you are screwed, you can't work. Six gigabyte is the minimum, and with six gigabyte, you can do a lot of things. Then, CPU, CPU, I will say that there is not a strict requirements for CPU. Of course, the faster, the better. I will say go with at least Intel 5, uh, Intel i5, i5 or greater, or AMD, the Ryzen 5 or greater but anyway for the cpu there is not a strict requirement so if you have a slower processor like intel i3 or slower amd ryzen or different cpu models is not really a problem in that case it will be just slower so don't worry about the cpu if you can't fit these requirements then ram memory this one is somewhat important as the six gigabyte of the graphic card. So RAM, if you are on a very tight budget, just go with at least eight gigabyte of memory, eight gigabyte 
or greater. And I recommend to buy a computer with at least two RAM slots. Uh, most of the time you can see on the specs, when you go and read the specs of the laptop, you can see how many slots the computer has for the RAM. You can buy with just, we can buy it with just eight gigabytes of RAM and then you can increase it later if for the moment the budget for you is a problem. I recommend of course go to go with at least 16 gigabytes of memory and more. What are the problems with low RAM memory? The problem mostly is that you can't open many programs together. So if you are using your computer, for example, for training, uh, some custom object detector, some custom, let's say, mask RCN detector, and you open other programs, there is not much RAM to fit the other pro different programs at the same time. So if you have low RAM, when your computer is training, you just need to leave it and do something else. Don't touch your computer. If you have more than six, at least 16 gigabyte of RAM or more than you can train and at the same time you can use your computer for just other normal tasks like surfing the internet, writing and so on. So these are, let's say the three most important components that your laptop needs to have for computer vision. But what is the most single important component? So if you can choose only one, what you need to focus on, you need to focus on NVIDIA with at least six gigabyte of memory. So if you're not sure what to do, just buy NVIDIA graphic card, six plus gigabyte of memory, and you will be sure that you're going on the right direction. Now to make things much simpler, we're going to see some examples of laptops that you could buy. I'm going to take uh, two or three examples and I will show you which one is the best and why. So let's check that. Uh, let's see now some examples on Amazon on some computer that might be good for computer vision and some computer that might not be good. I'm not going now to focus on specific brands and models. The only thing I want to show you is how to understand when this is not good and when this is good. So first of all, let's take this example right here. We have Lenovo, it doesn't matter the brand. So we don't care about that. I mean, that's your choice to which brand to focus on. But among the specs, we see the size of the screen, the resolution of the screen, the CPU, which I talked about earlier, so AMD Ryzen 5, but then there is NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. Now, how do we know how much memory this graphic card has? Sometimes that's written on the page where, the gra where they are selling the laptop, but it's not always written. So in this case, I don't see this written right here. So what you should do is to look for this graphic card name. You can search it on Google and most likely you will find this on the nvidia.com website. So we see GeForce GTX 1650, which is the same of that laptop. And let's see what is the GTX 1650. Uh, we have some technical specs about the speed and then we have four gigabyte of GB RAM DDR5. DDR5. Is this good? It's not good because as you saw at the beginning, the minimum required is six gigabyte of RAM. So this graphic card is not good. We need something better. So this laptop is not good, removed. Let's find another one. We have HP, Intel Core i5, Nvidia GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. And if we check right here, in this case, the, it's written about this item. We see some specs and there is NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti 6 gigabyte. So this is good because it has six gigabyte of RAM, which is the minimum entry level requirement. Of course, you need to consider the laptop always as a good starting point. They are good to work to make, to make many different projects about object detection and uh, instant segmentation with deep learning. But of course, there are certain limitations which we're going to see right now.
Let's now focus on the laptop's limitations because as I said before, it's a good option now to buy a laptop, but there are certain limitations when you want to upgrade these for more complex and bigger projects. And all the limitations always come to the graphic card and the memory. So we have the GPU, which is the most important component for the in GPU. In this case, let's say exactly laptop GPU. The limitations is that generally is less than eight gigabytes. Oh, okay, I'm messing with the colors. GPUs, laptop are less than eight gigabyte. And the reason is that these are gaming laptops. So they are very good for computer video games and they focus it on the speed of the card instead of the memory. This is the limitation. Anyway, you can still do a lot of things. So with this, you can work with what work with with object detection. You can do training with object detection. Detection. You can train the YOLO algorithm, for example, or different other algorithms with the limitation which is the limitation that the memory of the graphic card gives you and is mostly about limitation of the size of the image usually the bigger the size of the image the more precise is the model the lower the size the faster but the less precise yolo can use different size of the images which go from 416 pixels to above 1500 pixels for the latest versions and I tested with a six gigabyte graphic card memory and it can only run with around 512 pixels uh, of, uh, of size of the image. You can work with instance segmentation, instance segmentation, so mask RCNN, mask RCNN, you can do the training, always similar concept with object detection there is also in that case a size for the image and mask uh this is a heavy model in uh, any way okay I, I i messed the name mask rc and m there is certain size with the image but you can work with that so you can train that and you can run that on an image it will not run smoothly in real time but as i said it's a heavy model even with with very powerful expensive uh, new graphic cards, it doesn't run so smoothly. And then we have other just simple semantic segmentation. Segmentation. Like UNET is like one of the most popular algorithms that's run pretty fine with, with this GPU. Of course, this is quite good to work with. It's a good solution, for, at least for this year, where it's very hard to get graphic card, but if you are doing this professionally and you need to work with clients for specific projects, then of course, either renting a server by your own server, it's of course the best option to work with computer vision. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions about the laptop, let me know in the comments. And if it's something I can help you with, I will try to reply. So this is all for this video. See you in the next one.